kind of love taking pictures for people. I parked at the parking lot right up the way there and I was getting ready to make the video for today and some guy came up to me and asked if I could take his picture. He went to hand me his iPhone and I noticed a Nikon 5500 or something like that over his shoulder and I asked if I could use that camera and he says do you know how and I said yeah I can I can work it I'm a photographer and I grab his camera and I see it's on full auto mode and he was complaining that some of the pictures that he was getting were too dark so I told him about exposure compensation didn't know what that was. I said, well, you could go into manual and adjust it yourself. He said he didn't know what those settings really were, which is kind of sad. And it makes me want to do more videos like this to help people who invested money in their camera really get the most out of it. So that's what we're going to do. It's a snowy day out in Colorado. It's a full moon, so we can't really go take pictures of the stars right now but we can do our homework and plan for how we're going to get the best star pictures possible. So I'm going to be coming out with a couple of videos that are really dedicated to building your exposure and today's video is all about shutter speed. So when you're not using a tracker and you're photographing the stars, you can almost think of it in a similar way as photographing sports. We know when we're trying to photograph a receiver catching a football that we have to use a really fast shutter speed to freeze that action because that motion blur will just be distracting. And it's similar when you're photographing the stars. As the earth is rotating, those stars are moving very slowly across the sky. And if we use the wrong shutter speed, those stars will be blurry and distracting. So what is the optimal shutter speed for your lens and camera? Well, there's some math that we can do to help figure that out. The first equation we can use is the rule of 500, which is dividing 500 by the focal length of your lens. So for a 24 millimeter lens on a full frame camera, this equals out to about 21 seconds. So you can set your camera to 21 seconds and get a good picture of the stars. But the downside about the rule of 500 is that it was developed for high ISO film cameras. And those cameras really did not show as much detail as our modern DSLRs or mirrorless cameras. So we need to adjust that exposure a little bit. One easy way of doing it is instead of the rule of 500, we could use the rule of 400. So 400 divided by your focal length for that 24 millimeter camera equals about 16 seconds. And in my experience, 16 seconds is a pretty safe bet, but if you zoom in really close to your stars, or if you want to print massive prints of your images, even at 16 seconds, my camera still shows tiny little lines. So is there a way of getting a perfect exposure with completely sharp stars? How do we figure that out? Well, as I mentioned before, the rule of 500 was developed for film cameras with low detailed images. And now DSLR cameras are getting better and better. I shoot with a Canon 6D, which has a 20 megapixel sensor. So for me, 15 seconds or so is pretty good. But what if I was shooting on something like the Canon 5D SR? which has a much higher megapixel sensor and much more detail. Those little tiny star trails will get exaggerated. So thankfully there's a new formula that we can use. It's called the NPF rule. Now it's much more complicated than just dividing by 500 by your focal length. There's a lot of math that goes into figuring out your pixel density and math after you figure that out. So thankfully there is an app that we can use that does all of this hard work for us. I highly recommend that if you are serious about any sort of landscape, nature, astrophotography, to download the app PhotoPills. It has a ton of good tools, but right now we're just focusing on this one called the Spot Star Tool. Here you can enter your specific camera with the lens focal length and aperture that you plan on using, and it does the MPF math for you. So you can see here on my phone, I've entered my Canon 6D and my 24 millimeter lens and my 2.8 aperture, and it's giving me about 12 seconds. And that is a good shutter speed for getting nice sharp stars. 
But what if you have something with a much higher megapixel count? Well, right here, we can tap and find the Canon 5D SR, and you can see that there it's giving us about eight seconds. So that is definitely a much shorter time, but that is going to guarantee that you get pinpoint sharp stars. Everything has a balance for your exposure because while eight seconds on that camera will give you sharp stars, it also isn't letting as much light in. So you're gonna have to bump that ISO higher or open that aperture. So there's always a balance for finding what works best for you. Generally with my system, I shoot for 15 seconds, even though the MPF rule says 12 seconds. And I get very good results out of that. Results I can sell, results I can print very large. So it takes a little bit of experimenting. And this is something that you can do on a full moon or when it's near full. All you're trying to do is freeze the stars. So I'd like to encourage everyone to get their camera, get their tripod, go out anytime and figure out your best exposure. Then when it comes time to actually wake up at 2 a.m. and go shoot the Milky Way, there's no guesswork involved. You can even take the time to preset a custom shooting function so that all you have to do is switch it to that and it has your exact exposure settings ready. So using these tools, you'll be able to get much cleaner images of the night sky and produce prints that will be amazing. And that really is the best part about doing this, is taking a piece of your art, putting it on the wall, and sharing it with your friends and family. So I hope this video has been helpful to help understand the math. Please download PhotoPills. It is a great app and definitely worth the purchase. And as always, if you could give me that like, comment, and subscribe. And if the clouds ever go away and the stars are out, I'll see you out there.